What's good, everybody? This is Coach Phil, and welcome to another episode of Deep in the Game, man. And we have a Nigerian nightmare in himself, man. He looked like Trebek from Walker, Texas Ranger, but showing sure enough in open space, he's going to close the gap on you. He's going to shut you down and get 134 defensive tackles in a season, man. We got the man, hashtag Alway himself, Micah Alway. Micah, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, yes, man. Everything good with you, brother? You seem to be having a nice little off-season, man. What's going on with you? Man, you yeah, just focusing on one thing, getting faster, man. Name the game is speed. You know, speed is different. Speed makes you different. Speed kills. And uh, so that's really been my off-season whole bunch of other things too <laughs> oh, oh, oh best believe man y'all gotta understand man we've been having trying to get this in the works for a little bit man but this man all over the place man getting business taken care of but he here so michael man obviously man you had a phenomenal season man defense there 134 defensive tackles six special teams tackles three interceptions two sacks what the hell were you on this season man you was all you was balling out oh man it, it, it it's one of those things where uh i guess when they say like opportunity meets you know, it, it just kind of met together. You know, Calgary gave me a great opportunity. Um, I really couldn't say, like, yeah, I had a great season. But, you know, when you're surrounded by, you know, your Will linebackers, Cam Judge, to me, I was already thinking, like, well, they're going to have to choose their poison. Like, you know, at that point, and, you know, people wanted to <laughs> try me. So I, I got the opportunity. Um, and then, you know, you got the deal on in front of you, like Mike Rose, T Mac, you know, all, all the people we had in front of me, uh, she just made it easier. So it, it it's one of those things where, you know, the scheme definitely is good. Mm -hmm. Sure. But I, I knew that, you know, I knew that coming in my rookie year when I saw Alex Singleton 2017 doing what he was doing. Um, I knew, like, all right, that's a, that's, that's a good linebacker scheme. But I'm like, you know what? If I ever get in that scheme, if I ever get in that scheme, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different. And so it was. This was a goal of mine. That that last season was a goal of mine. So now I'm trying to take it up another notch. See, when I watched a lot of Calgary's games, I I I, I liked seeing that you guys were a very. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys were more of a gap control. Your run fits were there. You were free to kind of do what you wanted to. And you guys were a blitz happy defense. Would you say that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we 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 blitz. We blitz when we needed to. Um, but we really were, I would say, of all the defensive I've been on that last year, it's pretty balanced, you know, compared to uh when I was with Montreal the year before. I was the fifth D lineman at that point. <laughs> um, so, and, and that's one thing, like, I think a lot of people don't really realize is that, you know, depending on the scheme, that's what your tackles are going to kind of say, you know, if you're a Mike linebacker, that's on the line of scrimmage a lot, you're, you're going to get way less tackles. I mean, that means someone else is freed up. Whereas in Calgary, I was off the line of scrimmage a lot. So I had two different years back to back where one, I was on line of scrimmage 60% of the time. And the other one, I was off the line of scrimmage, you know, you know, twenty percent at a time. So it, it's it's very interesting. See, I like I like that you you the scheme. If you could explain the scheme to people, not give all y'all sauce away, but what is the scheme for you guys? If you could give a, a little behind the scenes. Oh man, I mean it, it it really isn't given much because it's a scheme that's been kind of proven throughout history, which is run to the ball. Like it, it sounds, it sounds cliche. It sounds cliche, but the the idea is, you know, Calgary, the, you know, the Calgary scouts, the GM D Dickerson, all of them, they get guys who can run. I mean, if you look at all the linebackers who ever played for Calgary in the past decade, the one thing is in common is that they can all run. Mm -hmm. So you get a person who can run, then it just it comes down to one thing: can you outrun them? <laughs> so. And then, and that's why that's why I've been focusing on what I've been focusing on my I'm in off season because it's like, well, if you can't outrun me, then I should be able to make more than 134 tackles next year and help the the team win more games. See, that should be that should be routine for you. Got for you being a linebacker that's free to kind of do fine ball, see ball, get ball, and I, what I like about your game, man, it, it's it's not. Whereas you got Cam on the other side of you, man, Cam out of this world big shout out to him man i've just reacted to his highlights and he he's the best way i could put when it comes to cam judges he remind me a little bit of clay matthews but he's got a a a freestyle uh, 
an IQ for the game, like a Luke Keekley for guys in the States to understand. Whereas for you, it's how do I put this? You don't, you're not thinking you're just playing free and you know, everybody's assignment. And that way you can go do your job and just go make tackles. You, you, yeah, feel, I mean, yeah, yeah that, that, no, I appreciate that. And, and it's funny that you said that because, um, I guess you would call that what instinct, mm -hmm. you know, instinct is what you would call that, man. I try to explain this to, you know, young guys coming up in football, like all ages. I'm like, you don't know. No one comes out the room out of the womb knowing how to read a pulling guard. Mm -hmm. Not one person. It's like, oh, pulling guard. I'm gonna, I know what to do. Not one person. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but the number one thing you would say is that, you know, you do an evaluation on a linebacker, you'd be like, oh, this guy has great instincts. Well, where is instincts? What is instincts? Instincts is learned. Mm -hmm. It's straight up learned. So um, all, all this instinct I learned was over film. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, my high school coach, um, he he's like he's a second father to me. He's the reason why I'm talking to you right now. Otherwise, I I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I'm playing professional football, but he he had me on film and like he had me loving film. Where you know my senior release in Texas, you know I I would have two hours before practice and I just watch film and not just film. I literally would just watch the guard, the right and left guard, right and left guard for like two hours a day my whole senior year. So now it's like every time I see that 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 little bucket step, I'm gone. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, that that's really what it comes down to is it's a lot of film work. Um, it, you know, I say sometimes I make it look too easy to where people kind of take it for granted. But I mean, that's how much film work I put in is it's to make it easy on myself to where, hey, I'm, I'm not really thinking I'm just reacting at that point. It's a lot of heavy repetition of just film, man, and instinct. I mean, and and for people to understand, man, you you a lot of times you're looking guard, center, guard, that triangle. It'll tell you what they're gonna do in that run game. Whether it's going and the difference between those pulls is man, it's it's a tight pull, is a step. You look at his feet, how's he stepping? Where is he going? Yeah. Is he gonna go second level? What what are they doing as far as on film and the film will tell you if film don't lie you, you talk about analytics you can talk about all these different stats and and prediction uh projections and all that stuff but no the film tells you what you're gonna do as a linebacker you got to be able to know hey am i gonna jump over here am i gonna move here what angle do i want to take am i in pursuit how am i doing these different things like you i love watching you fly side on the sideline but you're also hey i can break on a 90 i can break at a this angle i can do different things so hell of a linebacker you are man but what's interesting okay. is man you're from lagos nigeria <laughs> we gonna get into your story brother so tell us man you were born january 4th 1994 lagos nigeria man take us back man yeah i mean yeah my story is that it's it's a uh, it's not i mean to me it's not crazy because it's what happened but um it is something that I always look back on because I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm happy it happened this way. So long story short, I'm only here in America because back in the Clinton administration, um, they had something that was called a, uh, a visa lottery. Yeah. And my mom, someone had told my mom to go sign up for it. And, you know, my mom, she's a doer. She, <laughs> she didn't waste no time. She, she did the application, signed up for it. And then, we got it like it was my mom my my dad and my um my mom and my mom my dad and me and uh we got the visa lottery so it literally you get a visa to come live in america and there was only i think only like fifty thousand throughout that whole time that got it mm. so um and it, it doesn't exist anymore it was just again like i said it was just that clinton administration and that's how i that's how we got to america um so anytime I'm out there on the field or I'm struggling or like something's hard. I kind of just look back at that and be like, well, I mean, I'm here for a reason. Like, you know, I've had plenty of setbacks. I mean, very recent setbacks, but then in my head, I always got to go back to me. I mean, I must be here for a reason. There's no way that my mom just got lucky and I just happened to be, you know, 1% to 1% playing football. Like there's a reason why I'm here right now. So I don't take any of that for granted. Um, so we end up coming here and, we had some family here uh, in New York, we went to New York first, but um, my parents thought that was too big city. So then they thought, let's go to Alabama. <laughs> and we went to Talladega, I think Talladega, 
And then they were like, you know what? That's too country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then we ended up in uh in Dallas, Texas, Arlington, Texas is where I grew up most of my life. And now we live in Mansfield, Texas. Um, but uh that that is that's my second home. I mean, that's that's really where I grew up at. And um I'm so thankful for that that school I went to. I went to Mansfield Summit, but uh it really all started in Cobo Middle School. And um that's where my football career started and you probably heard this before, but like, interesting enough, uh, I was a soccer guy. Obviously, I'm Nigerian. That's yeah. my first yeah. love. Yeah. That's my first love. I mean, I played soccer, I think, in sixth grade or whatever. I loved it, man. I loved it. I loved it. But then in seventh grade, you know, being in Texas, all my friends were joining the sport called football. And I'm like, man, my, my first memory of football, this mm-hmm. is my first memory of football, was I was like, I must have been like, six or five years old and we were in an old apartment and it was Saturday, it was Saturday morning. So you know what time it is Saturday morning cartoons. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm flipping through the cartoons. I'm flipping, flipping, flipping. And then it lands on like channel four or something. It's like probably on CBS or something. I see these big shoulder bags. It was like white and yellow. I'm pretty sure it was Michigan versus like Penn State or something. Mm-hmm. But I remember thinking, my remember my thought was like, man, their shoulder, the, the shoulder is so big and what is going on? All they look like they were doing is this. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? This ain't for me. I flip right past it. Little did I know. Little did I know. So um, anyways, get back to seventh grade. Uh, the first day I, I joined it just because all my friends joined it. And uh <laughs> That's when I started learning about the scouting, the scouting uh, system, which was, so they lined us up on the 50. There was a coach at the very end and, you know, walk up, he either point this way or point that way. So I'm about halfway through the line and I'm like, I'm starting to realize, okay, the kids over here look pretty good. They look athletic. Kids over there, not so much. I don't, <laughs> I don't know about them. So I get up to the coach. I'm like, all right, A team, B team, of course. And then boom, hits me to that C team, D team. And even worse, I got put on the D team, <laughs> like the bottom of the bottom. I'm like, <laughs> and I've never, I've never played football. I'm like, what? Like, man, I remember my dad picked me up from, from um, practice and I was crying. I just started crying. And he said, why are you crying? I was like, because I got on the D team. And he, he laughed because he didn't understand either. Like, he's from Nigeria. He's like, what? <laughs> like, he didn't even know what D team was. He was just like, why are you crying? Like, <laughs> something that you don't even know. And I'm like, man, but that, that hit me that, that moment right there. Like, that's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm a professional athlete. Cause I never, ever wanted to be like put on the lowest pedigree ever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking about ever again. Yeah. It, it still hurt. I, I remember that day. Like it was like last minute. Um, so from that day on, I mean, I was on uh, first position was fullback <laughs> and we ran 32 and 31 ISO. Uh, you, you remember those plays? Just Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I still I still get confused about this one thing every day, like every time I think about it, because I used to get like 60, 70 yard touchdowns. And now that I'm a linebacker, I'm like, how did a fullback go through the A gaps? <laughs> untouched <laughs> like, you know un- why you know why because back then we were we're we're about the same age you're like a a year i'm about to be thursday i'm gonna be turning t- 30 so we're about okay. that same age like yeah. in the rut like quarterback sweep was like the thing and split back and lead draws and that was that was football <laughs> you know yeah our coaches did not teach us about stun pop pop that fullback put him on his ass and just go get him but those were fundamentals that these kids know from jump we didn't know that was like just go go hit a motherfucker it's like (laughs) but but how like i don't know just go do it it's like all right right." (laughs) i just there's there was no you you know that like there was no you just went and did it yeah there was no um did you guys run? Uh, what were you guys running back then? Let's let's let's, let's see. Let's see. What, what defense were y'all running? Was it a just a forty six? Oh, middle school. Oh, middle about, school. My middle school. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, you see the, the, this part of my story. I played fullback on D team all halfway through the year. Mm-hmm. I was getting touchdowns left and right. Yeah. Then I got moved up to B team. <laughs> 
So then, so then I'm the I'm the B team fullback, still doing the same thing. And um, it's actually a real real quick funny story. Yeah. Um, I got moved up to B team, and like my first my first uh, game, they're like, "All right, Micah, you're gonna be our uh, punt returner blocker." Okay, so you you're gonna be 15 yards in front of the block because I'm a fullback. So yeah, yeah. You know how to block. You're gonna be 15 yards in front of the in front of the punt returner, and then when he catches the ball, you're gonna lead him left or right depending on the call. I'm like, okay, bet. And then he comes back like one, one thing. I'm like, what, coach? Don't ever catch the ball. Just let him let him catch it. Like let him catch it. Don't 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 touch the ball. <laughs> I, I was like, I mean, all right. I mean, I'll do my job. First punt that week. First one in the game, boom, straight from the air. It's coming straight to me. I'm talking about not like back up, not front. I'm talking about like, oh, it's coming. It's coming right to me. And my teammate, I see his face right now for his name. He's like, Micah, move. <laughs> I'm like, why? But, but why? But, but for like, what? Why? But why? <laughs> for what? So, boom, I never, mind you, mind you, I, I, I've never caught a punt. Not even in practice, like in my life. I've I've only seen it up in there and let him like ever. Yeah. Boom. I catch it clean. <laughs> okay. And then I see I see the field. It's my I'm talking about this. My, I guess I've been playing fullback, so I, I got a little vision on me. Boom, I see the field. And all I remember seeing was like, all right, there's one or two guys to my right, but I could outrun them. They, they didn't look like too much, too good at athletes. So I just took care of them, boom, I ran them. And then I kind of got to that stopping point to where I just saw a C. But I looked to my my far right. I'm like, ain't nobody there. Boom, one cut. <laughs> touchdown. And then when I go in for the touchdown, I do a little front look for the first time. I'm feeling myself. I'm, my God, went out there, show it out. <laughs> I don't know what came through me because I've never, again, I've never done a front flip before. I, come on. I'm some kid from Nigeria. You, you, we don't grow up doing front flips. I'm just, just being real. Like we, we don't go to our backyard <laughs> and, our and start doing like, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. We're, reading, we're reading books inside. So boom, I do a front flip. And then my coach, he really liked me, but I come to the sideline. He, he got this stern face. He said, Mike, I said, yes, sir. He said, act like you've been there before. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Don't ever flip in the front I'm in the end zone again. Like you act like you've been there before. I'm like, yes, sir. But in my mind, I'm thinking, but I've never been there before. Like I've never had a punt return on someone. Anyways, no, so no, that- no, you know what? <laughs> okay, okay. Since we since we out here sharing stories for special teams, I remember mine from youth football. Remember we had you before you had your first game. You had the jamboree. Did you guys have I those? Actually, the jam- I actually never played. I never played like. Pee wee or anything, okay. just just middle school. So kind of like when all the schools like they get together, and it's like a scrimmage. You guys, okay, okay. So we had my first. It was my first year. We had like eighty niners, where it was like you know eight nine year olds, whatever, right? So my coach, Coach Billy, God rest his soul, he said, "All right, special teams, get out there." That is mind you, first game, okay. And I'm like. The hell is special teams? So I go out there. I've been playing basketball all my life. I'm like, all right, let's go out here. Let's see what's gonna happen, right? So I'm on the far end. I'm like, you know what the bigger guys? I'm at the end. And he told us before we go out there, he was like, just fall on it, just fall on it. It'll be fine, just fall on it. I was like, okay. Now you know, we we are, as black folk, we athletic, but we ain't really <laughs> mastered the kick. It ain't really our thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm over, I'm looking, I chuck put my chin strap on. I see my mom over the sidelines, like my baby in there, with whatever type shit. <laughs> and I'm thinking there ain't no way they're gonna kick it to the lot. Motherfucker couldn't kick for shit. That shit doinked off the ground, came this way. And I'm like, all right, bet, I'm gonna fall on it. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna go. I picked that suck. All I see is just orange and blue Viking helmets coming at me. I'm like, all right, this is the part of the game they didn't teach us right here. Motherfuckers gonna come at you. And ain't none of, ain't none of these motherfuckers gonna block for me. I got hit in the ribs. I thought I got stabbed like 12 times, bro. Never, uh uh-uh. uh. Mm mm. That's when I learned that day. Special team, special teams ain't for me, brother. Uh, uh-uh. uh, that's funny. That's, that's funny. Uh, uh-uh. see, you got the, you got, see, see, you got the nice, you know, got the first time you get I it, did. take it to the crib, whatever. I did. I, my I big did. ass on the line and shit, getting knocked <laughs> out and crying and shit. Fuck, forget you. Oh, I, I got a question. So you mentioned your dad. Yeah. Does your dad have the cliche Nigerian accent? 
he he actually he can, but he actually if he were to speak into you, he he'd be able to speak. He would able to speak like you. Okay. He, he, okay. He, he works in he works in um Dallas County Jail. So and he's been working there his whole his whole like career. So he <laughs> he 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 knows how to speak. He knows how to speak. Now my mom she has the accent, but it's not it's not too bad. But you know, now my dad he can actually switch it up on you. You you wouldn't know. Yeah, See, wouldn't know. I love what one, one of my favorite things in life is uh the different dialects and accents from Africa, you know, Nigerians, oh, Ghanaians, yeah. Congans. But Nigerians are funny just because you can be whatever you want to be. Okay. <laughs> we don't do we don't what what chat with both black peasant, we don't do that here. That's, that shit cracks me up, man. <laughs> So take no, us through. So yes. so then, man, you went to uh, you at Arlington. I'm uh, sorry, Arlington Mansfield Summit. How yeah. did you get recruited to Texas Tech? Yeah, I got a real specific story on that one. So it's my um my junior year. You know, we have spring ball, so mm -hmm. it's my junior year of spring ball, and I'm walking off my last practice, and I'm walking out with my coach, Coach Sample, and he he turned around and asked me like, "You going to any camps this summer?" And I was like no and he's like why not i was like and, it, and in my head i was thinking like my dad ain't gonna no he's not gonna pay for me to go out there and have you know have fun essentially like you know it gotta be about the school and the grades so i was already like mm, i'm not gonna be able to convince him coach it, yeah but i said no and he's like why not i was like yeah i just don't think it's gonna work out with my parents with my dad and he said all right bet <laughs> i'll call him so he calls him and then Long story short, he's like, all right, Mike, are you going to camps this summer with me? But uh, I promise your dad you get A's. I was like, <laughs> all right. So, boom, we're in uh, we're like that's late spring, summer. And um, I go to a couple camps, but I'll go to one at Nike Spark Combine. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so oh, I yeah. To, yeah, I went to the Spark Combine, went there, you know, ran my 40, which sketchy about the 40. It was like hand. It started hand time, but it ended laser. How is that possible? That I promise you. It's funny what I do right now with purple shit. Anyways, anyways, anyways. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna go into that because I think they had me at like a four, like eight or something. I'm like, goodness gracious. Anyways, which it could have been true. It's just like, why did you start with hand? Why, why not just do laser, laser? Anyways, so so then um. I did that, and then I did the ball throw. The ball throw was one thing I was not good at. I could never figure it out. I don't know why. And it's not because I can't power clean, because I, I can power clean. Mm -hmm. It's just something about the ball throw. But then there was a vertical jump. So, boom, the vertical jump. I jump it my three times, and, man, I, I wish I knew this man. But on my third one, he, like, looked at me. He's like, you got more. I was like, I really was thinking, like, I mean, I, I'm maxing out. It's You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm maxing out. He's like, you got more. I was like, all right. So it was a little jump mat. Boom. I jump. He's like, better. But you got you got more. You got more. I was like, all right. I'm I'm feeling motivated. Yeah. Boom. I jump. Land. 40.1. Mm. So so I and and so anyways, I had a good time. My spark, my spark score was like it was better because of that vertical, but you know, anyways, the, the 40 time and all that wasn't all that good, but the vertical was, you know, good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I leave the camp. And then a week later, boom, Texas Tech comes to my school and they're, hey, we want to see you. It's like, Texas Tech. Mm. And then it's like, yeah. Um, and it's Coach Punny. Um, and he came up to me and, and, you know, he's talking to me in my school and he said, you know, we really like you uh, and we, we, we want to offer you, but you got to come to our satellite camp. So there was a satellite camp in, uh, Hebron or something like that. It, it was one of the Dallas Rockwall in Rockwall. So I go to the satellite camp. I run my 40. And then um coach is like, oh man, you just ran a four, like a low four or five, what blah blah blah. Did one on ones, killed it. And then um Coach Prunny comes up to me towards the end of the camp, not over yet, but he's like, Hey, go over to the defensive coordinator and tell him that you want to be a red raider. And I I was I mean, I can talk, but like I wasn't like a super outgoing kid. But when I tell you that I did not have a second thought, as soon as he told me to go over there and tell Coach that, I was like, "Man, I'm there's not if there's a time to be scared, this is not the time." So yeah, boom, speak I up. Went over, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I went over to him. I said, "Coach, I love to be a Red Raider." He said, "Micah, we're gonna offer you a scotch." 
Mm. And, it, and I'll never forget that. I was like, heart drop. I'm like, man, it, it was just crazy. And then again, another dad story. So I got the scholarship and I'm on the phone with my dad and I tell him, hey, dad, I just got a scholarship to Texas Tech. And he said, okay, and hanged up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he, he, he didn't he didn't he didn't get he didn't understand. He did not understand that that just paid for all the the next four years of my life. He did not understand that that paid for it. Top top of the line education. He had no idea. He just said, okay. I'm sorry. He, said, he just said, okay. Like, like okay. what does that have to do with me? Man. Man. No, no. I don't give you credit. No, no. He, he I'm talking about he had. Bro, I got a you, cramp. You got hold on, hold on. I got a cramp. <laughs> I got a cramp in my rib because <laughs> I got friends. I went to school with people. You know, Ethiopia, Nigeria. It's they're so short with what they what they say, and you, you don't know yeah. like is that good or is that bad. Like, <laughs> no, nah, that was irrelevant. <laughs> it was that. What was that? Oh man, he, he yeah, he he didn't understand. He didn't understand. But he what said, did you explain to him? Like, Dad, you don't have to pay. For anything for four years. No, 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 there's no time for that. That's what you don't understand. <laughs> it was that's it. I'm like, all right, I guess you'll find out later. No, about oh, later man. on. Did you explain to you like when you got home? Like, hey, I we ain't gotta pay for nothing, nothing like that. No, no, that 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 came that came on when Coach Toberville came to our house okay. and then he told them all that. Then it was like, Oh, these people come to my house and they, and they, they want to give my son a scholarship. Okay. Yeah. It's funny, my mom, my mom, <laughs> funny, funny story. So Coach Tuberville comes, and then Coach Funny comes, and my mom knows they're coming. So she cooks some, like, fish, like, African fish. <laughs> like, like true African, like, a whole meal. And it's funny, because uh, it was, like, years later. Uh, Coach Tuberville, he's like, it was, like, I guess two years later, three years later, he's like, hey, Mike, I remember that time I came to your house for a visit. That fish your mom made, man. It was so good. It was so good. I'm like, I mean, he's probably never had anything like that. He's like, it was spicy. It was spicy, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> she threw the rice with it too. Oh, she did the whole the whole thing, and they, they ate it. I, I saw him eat all of it, like because I came. I actually came home at, from from practice after he was there. So, mm -hmm. anyways, so it was all good. They they did that. So that's my that's my recruiting story. My bad. It's probably that was long. No, you Long could, man. Story. Hey, that's what this is about, man. Yeah. So you tell your story, Eddie, whatever you want, man. This is your time, yeah. your story, brother. So yeah. the thing that I, I've interested you, we've talked about it before, uh, starting recording. You were there with Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes. Now I know you probably get asked this a lot. I don't want to do that and be like, what was it like playing with Pat? Did you see what Patrick could be? No, just what was it like playing for Cliff and what was it like just in the it, for people that don't know. We all, a lot of us only remember with Mike Leach, God rest his soul, and with Mike Crabtree and Graham Harrell and all those guys. But what was it like at that time uh, playing for Cliff and just the the culture of, te of the Texas Tech Red Raiders? Yeah, I mean, and, and I'll say the question about Pat later. But um, no, nah, it was good. Like, Coach Kingsbury, like, the, the thing that I don't think a lot of people understand about Coach Kingsbury is that, you know, it, it was a it was a blessing, but it was an unfortunate a little bit for him. I think is that he he's one of the most hardworking people like ever, like ever. And, and the the reason why I know that um, is because my senior year I took a, a class with the the chancellor of Texas Tech, Kent Hans, and because um, he he invited me to take the class, and then um, he actually he just had guest speakers come like multi millionaires, like very successful people or whatever. But he had Coach Kingsbury come in and talk one day. And it was interesting because I didn't really know Coach Kingsbury's story. But, like, long story short, just like me, his only scholarship was Tech. Like, that was his only scholarship. And, like, to be the quarterback he was at Tech, it, it's pretty amazing. Like, that was his only scholarship. And it, his main story was just, like, he was mad that no one really gave him opportunity. And he just worked super hard, like, extremely hard and all i kept on hearing were like parallels to like my story mm -hmm. because because he didn't really get the opportunities that most other people would get so he kind of converted that into like all right i'm gonna work for it i'm gonna show y'all um so kingsbury is like i said like knowing that story and knowing his story he's one of the most hard working people like in the world like i'm not even kidding 
Uh, he was there like late at night as a head coach, D1 head coach, which you don't have to be. Trust me, you don't have to be. But he was because that's how much he wanted it. So he had that culture and he kind of brought that to the rest of the team. Um, and then from just like a football standpoint, one thing that people don't understand, because I know a lot of people think Texas Tech defense uh, is, is garbage. It's sorry. No, no, no. If, there's, if you're saying that, you, you probably just don't know about numbers. And, you know, a lot of people aren't great at math. But, for example, in practice, um, we would have, like, we would start off with fast start. So fast start was like five to ten plays where as soon as Mahomes threw the ball and the receiver caught the ball, before he was even tagged down, like touchdown, the equipment manager already had the ball lined up for the next play. Mm. Like, air raid, like an uh, air raid. Like there is no rest in between. But we had so many plays in practice, like probably over like 120 plays. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, throughout like seven on seven and all that in practice. And then in the games, we averaged, I think, probably like 105, 110 plays a game. And if you look at SEC, they're averaging, what, 55 plays, maybe 60. Mm -hmm. So then you look at the, you know, yards per carry, all right, if you have five yards per carry and there's 10 plays, that's 50 yards. Mm -hmm. But if you have five yards per carry and there's, let's say, double the plays, 20, you know, that's 60, that's, uh, what is that, 60 yards or whatever, right? right? So it's like still five yards per carry. The defense is still doing what they're doing. It's just that you have twice as many plays. So it was just like, it was just, to me, again, that football-wise, it prepared me for the CFL. Yeah. Where bigger open field, you know, bubble screen, bubble screen, you know, mm-hmm. jet sweep, jet sweep, got to tackle over play on open space. Mm-hmm. But the advantage I had was that we're not doing, no one's doing air raid. No. And the day, the day a CFL team does air raid, watch them take off. Oh, I've seen that on Twitter. Folks talking about, yeah. Like I see people talking about how um, Cliff Kingsbury should have came to the CFL and this, the that, and the third. It's like, you don't want that. (laughs) You don't. I had uh, Jamal Morrow on. Jamal played uh, Wazoo. And he know about, he mentioned about the air raid uh, with Mike Leach and all that. I'm like, folks don't understand. They think, oh, it's just a bunch of, uh, Throwing the rock and all that stuff, man. You, there's a science behind it with Norm Chow and all those guys, Mike, and just the 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 offense. Yes, you're gonna get yards, you're gonna get points, but your defense gonna be out there a lot if they turn that ball over. It, it's yeah. like it's like an offense on crack. If yeah. it, once it starts, and if you and if you get the tempo right, yeah, come on, man. But yeah, for you. You accumulated 171 solo tackles over 51 games, man. 77 stops as a senior, and you were a defensive captain in 2015. What was the what was the defense you guys were running there, and where did you feel like you? Why did you feel like you fit that defense so well? Yeah, so um, it was Coach Coach Gibbs, David Gibbs, the um, defense coordinator, and it was a it was a multiple defense, but mm-hmm. probably a base four three, mm-hmm. um, or four two most of the time, but um. I mean, I fit that defense because uh, <laughs> I had five defense corners in four years. Ooh. So <laughs> there's no, at that point, I had seen it all, <laughs> or most of it. <laughs> so it, it, there really wasn't anything. We go 4-2, 4-3, 3-3, 3-2, 5-1, 6-2. It, it, it didn't matter at that point because I already had five defense corners in four years. So <laughs> to, me, <laughs> to me, it just came down to like, and that's why I'm able to process things because yeah. – I kind of have a lot to go back on. Like, oh, this this is kind of like my sophomore year when we ran this. Okay, it kind of acts the same way. So that yeah. that's why I think um I had uh, you know a lot of success there um on my senior year. Now you know, as we mentioned before, man, I'm gonna ask it again. What was it like playing with Patrick Mahomes? And did you see what did you see in his future? What we see now? Um, no. Oh, the short answer. The short answer is. <laughs> the, the, the short answer is yes like because the truth is it was just a standard like i wasn't surprised like if people people you know a lot of times my teammates they think you know if i'm talking about like a, a player or whatever i'm like yeah he he's not all that they're like oh you just hate him. you just hate him 
I'm like, no, I'm I'm really not hating. Like I I saw Patrick Mahomes for four years. I, I picked him up in practice. Like I I went against the offense. Like I, I'm not really in like this person you're talking about. I, I really don't see that much just because my standard is Patrick Mahomes. Like that's mm-hmm. my standard of offenses. So to me, he he was just always he just did what he he just did what he did. Like it, it wasn't really special. But now the biggest thing is like he just had opportunity. And and the difference though, I think, is that he he's always wanted to be great. Again, like when he was a sophomore, he wasn't really because that's when I was a senior. He wasn't a leader, but he didn't have to be because you know we had a lot of senior leaders and stuff like that. But he's he, he didn't have to push him. Like we didn't have to be a come on, my, like come on, Patrick, let, let's go. Like turn it up. Like he's fine. <laughs> like he's trying to make a sixty yard throw. Like he's trying to be the greatest he can. So like that's that's why right now, once the you know people start realizing like how good he was, you know, people talking about sophomore slump and stuff. I'm like, ain't no sophomore slump. <laughs> like he, he he's he's he is trying to be him. Like in every single day. Like yeah. even with this third. This this uh second Super Bowl, or I guess yeah, second one. He you see what he said in his, in his interview. He's like, it's never been d- done before a third one. He wasn't even worried about the Super Bowl he just won. Like that's what people don't understand. Like he's thinking about that speech. I guarantee you for like two months. Yeah. Like the moment yeah. we win the Super Bowl, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about that Super Bowl. I'm gonna talk about the third one that's never been done before. And then y'all gonna really call me to go. But. That's his mindset, but it's also the mindset of a lot of my other teammates. Like for one, like Pete Robertson, mm. BJ, like the Sam McGuavin. Like if you go look at that that team we had, we're not Alabama with the big names, but we have ballers. It's just that you know Sam McGuavin, like for example, he should be a starter. Like I don't know why he's not the starter right now in the NFL, but he should be. Again, it's just opportunity. But Mahomes got the opportunity. Pete Robertson, like all of us, got that mentality. Um, and even uh, uh, Jones from Edmonton Elks, Texas Tech guy, like we all got that same mentality, and that's what Mahomes got. He just is taking off with it, and shoot, I'm I'm happy for, I'm proud of him for doing it. There it is, right there, man. So, moving on to back to Michael Awe, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I I I honestly I I didn't want to ask it, but if I. I Nah, I didn't want to. Yeah, I knew you, you weren't giving me a politically correct. As, oh yeah, I always knew he was gonna be great. And nah, I, I, just I had to. I had to. Man. Nah, you good. You nah. good. <laughs> <laughs> so you went undrafted in 2016, man. You signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man. You got a long list of goddamn teams. Uh, you went to Tampa Bay. You went to BC. New York Jets. Back to BC. Toronto, Winnipeg, Ottawa, back to BC for a third time. That that kind of made me laugh a little bit. Like three times? Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Montreal and then with Calgary. So you don't have to go into all the stops, man. Uh, but take us, tell us, man, where did, uh, I guess, take us from Tampa, CFL, and then where you are now? Yeah, I mean, Tampa, <clears throat> the whole draft process was just crazy like the evaluation process like had 126 127 tackles my senior year top 15 in the country didn't even get first or second team all big 12 i got like honorable mention um none of those other linebackers are playing today uh but anyways it's besides the point <laughs> um no I mean, they, they think you forget stuff like that no i, I no no you this. don't no yeah, no you I, competitor yeah. you know every motherfucker that was yeah. there nope mm-hmm. yeah and i read the articles but um <laughs> oh my but God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, my my agent that I had, um, he he was like for sure getting drafted. Like you produce, and I, you know, I was only a freshman to actually play and this and that. Nothing. Three days go by, nothing. <laughs> Same story. I'm like, dang, my it's my career over. And then somehow, some way, my agent, you know, got Tampa Bay to sign me on a uh, or to sign me to the rookie mini camp. Mm-hmm. which I was like, oh, bet, I made the team. But I didn't understand the numbers. I didn't know that I was one of 90 that was trying out for the 15 guys they already drafted slash got as priority free agent. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even a priority free agent. And um, I remember that that first day, I was third string linebacker, Will linebacker. And the first string is, you know, he's really he's talking. 
acting like he made the team, which he, he said it didn't. Like, oh, they just gave me a $15,000 signing bonus, blah, blah, blah. And, and talking, I'm just mm. like, in my head, I'm like, oh, man, like, I'm about to take your spot. <laughs> sure enough, sure enough, going into it, I did. I took a spot. Um, they told him that he was too small. He was like 6'1", like two two thirty, and I was six foot two sixteen. So, anyways, they just be saying stuff. But yeah. um, so I I made the team initially, and then um, I went to training camp, and like I always tell people, my biggest thing I want to like get out of this Tampa Bay and tell you and tell everyone is, it was one of the best experiences of my life, man. Like those guys in the locker room, like Levante David, mm. man, he's so humble. Like he still like hits me up on Instagram and stuff like that. Like, you know, he likes my stuff. And Mike Evans, like, as big as a superstar he is, like, still that down-to-earth guy, um, Jerry McCoy and all that. So um, Tampa Bay was, like, an incredible time. And, uh, yeah, but anyways, I, I can go through the cut story, but that's going to that's gonna take too long. But um, No, no, like, no. Everybody tell their cut story. You got you, you can't get, uh-uh. Nah, go ahead, brother. Tell the cut story. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so... Shoot, yeah. <laughs> so boom, training camp. I go, I go through training camp, and man, I still got so many stories on training camp and all that. But <laughs> all that, all that goes good. All that goes good. I, I, I survived. So I survived the first cut, which was crazy. Hearing the door slam, mm -hmm. boom, and then and now uh, it's the second cut. And man, there's another story in there, but may, maybe not that. But another interview for the 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 other the other stories. But anyways, oh yeah. So, I made practice squad. Long story short, um, I made practice squad. I'm like, man, this is incredible. Like, I'm living my dream. This is it's, this is this is great. And then I remember um, my girlfriend, which is my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, my wife now. She she calls and we're talking. I'm like, hey, like, yeah, I'm a, we're gonna I'm gonna fly you up because we have we we're playing that we were playing the um who we were playing that first Atlanta we we're playing mm -hmm. Atlanta, and I was actually on defensive scout team as Dion Jones. Yeah, I was like, I was that guy. And then, so they were going, the team was going to go. I was going to have her come up and then we we're going to have like our first weekend in Tampa, you know, have a good time and stuff, this and that. Yeah. And, um, but when she bought a ticket, I was like, Hey, just, just get that insurance. Like just in case, like I get moved up because guys get moved up. I'm, I'm yeah. your, uh, Barber running back for us first thing, but he got moved up like day two. I'm like, oh, she bet. Like, I play special teams. I, I'm gonna get moved up too. So, like, go ahead and get that that insurance in case you know I'm gone to Atlanta. You know. So she's like, all right, bet, bet. She, so she gets it. And then it's Friday or Thursday practice or whatever, the last practice. Mm -hmm. And um, man, I'm feeling good, man. I'm I'm working out. I'm doing my workout. You know, all the guys are leaving, and I'm doing my workout. Take me about. I even take my time. It's like an hour and a half, two hours, even though it's probably, <laughs> probably a thirty minute workout. Oh yeah, my time. and this whole time I've seen this one dude I've never seen before, just kind of lurking around, like doing his own thing, like working. And then, boom, I'm done. I'm like, all right, y'all, see y'all tomorrow. And then, um, guy comes up to me, hey, hey, Micah, like, yeah. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, do I know you? Like, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, can you come upstairs real quick? I'm like, oh man, bet I'm about to get moved up. I'm about. Bro, they're about to activate me. Of course, I ball out in training camp. Of course, they're about to activate me. I knew this. So then, boom, going up the staircase, and I hit the like the like right when I hit that like second flight. You know when you go up, I hit that yeah. second flight. Yeah, things kind of changed. I turned my head. I was like, wait, wait a second. I've seen this. I've seen this somewhere before. Hard knocks. Oh my god. <laughs> I said, oh. I'm getting cut. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting cut. I seen this. I'm getting cut. And then I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is the, the random guy that this just been lurking, you know, like the scout. They call the turn. Oh, man. So I go upstairs and I go to the, the Grim Reaper's office, Shelton Quarles. He actually played in the CFL for BC Lions in 94. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm in, I'm in Shelton Quarles' room and He's like, yeah, Micah, we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Anyways, so that that that's my cut story. You it, know it what? Was, uh, I, I've heard so many cut stories. 
the, yeah. the, the you know you know who has the number one cut story here on Deep in the Game? Who? A Darius Pickett. Oh, and, what, what was this? He was with the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. And he said that he, they flew him in. They was like, oh. Something about an iPad or something. You got you got watch. You got to ask him and or watch the episode, man, because it it was the most stunning. Like you made me fly back here to Foxborough <laughs> to return an iPad, and you're not returning my calls. And then you say, "Oh, by the way, I'm cut. You're cut. Thanks for the iPad." Like that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> and, and if you get to talk, to, if you get to talk to AP, man, he'll tell you. He, have him tell you the story about when he went to uh. Coach, no, I think they never told me that. The, 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 uh, when he coached at UCLA, like that was like a grad assistant, and the coach tried to run up. The coach tried to run off with not paying him. That had me in bloody tears. Oh my god, I've heard some cut stories, man. Y'all, y'all go through it, man. So, how the hell you end up in the CFL? I mean, you went to BC, man, and uh, take us along the way, brother. Yeah, yeah. So, I the first time I heard about the CFL was the day after I broke Carson Wentz's ribs. And, wait, um, what? Wait, yeah. wait, a wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wait. You ain't about to sit here. What? Wait, you broke Carson Wentz's wrist. Yeah, that, that that I'm pretty sure that that, that blackballed me. I'm I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh. Um, and, and there's another story in there, but I'm I'm serious. I, I got a lot of stories, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put that one for, for later. We we, we for go sure. we 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 go link on that one. We're gonna link another time. Yeah, yeah, just remember that one. But oh uh, um, yeah, oh I'll remember that. <laughs> Was so this was, MVP, was, was was this that uh season he was gonna win the MVP and then he tore his knee no, up? No, this was his rookie year. You ain't Th- shit. We ca- we came in together. It, all right, let me, I'll, I'll I'll give you the 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 actual play because the play is is crazy. Um, I was so I got married last off season and when I was getting married, I was cleaning out the house, this and that. So boom, I found I found my 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 journal from Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. All my notes, man. I took so many notes. You know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to make a team. Yeah. I still, I still take a lot of notes, trust me. But I, I took a lot of notes. So, boom, I'm going through it, just reminiscing. I remember the plays, and then, boom, I flipped through. I'm like, I drew it up. I said, oh, lightning zero. Ooh. I was like, that, that's it. So, boom, if you, you can go look it up on YouTube. Just put, you can't put Mike Alway necessarily because I don't know if they put my name. They, they might put my name. It was Carson Wentz. Uh, rib fracture or whatever but um i come off the edge it's a blitz i come off the edge and all i remember all i remember was just like it was like the tackles right there boom down say hut boom no tackle like like this orange bottle Mm -hmm. that was carson wentz boom so like i'm i'm just like oh this is it like I'm, i'm i'm going to hit him and I did not break down nothing. Boom! I hit him. He barely gets the, the ball off. But then we, you know, it was third and eight. Boom! I hit him. Got the got the ball off. And then um, you know, we got off the field. Everyone's cheering. And I was like, yeah, like good job, Mike. Blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, I just hit the first round. Like first round number two overall. Like this is it. This is what you need. Yeah. And then um, I get to my sideline, Coach Duffy, Coach Duffy. He's kind of like in the midst of everyone. He's like right behind. He's just looking at me like this. Everyone else is cheering. I'm like, what's up with like? I was like, he's like Micah. I was like, yes, sir. He said, the running back. I said, what? Oh, so, <laughs> so that that lightning zero. I done looked up. It's an all out blitz. Yeah, but I wrote I wrote in quotations for me. Come off the 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 field side edge peel yeah i wrote peel i wrote it right there i wrote it right there peel which for all y'all who know who don't know if the running back flares out i come out of the blitz and i pick up the running back yep yep (laughs) you know no you know coaches old school coaches say if you're going to do something wrong do it 100 percent. that's right (laughs) well (laughs) well well it, it's funny. It's funny, but that that concept right there saved my career. It literally, ex- I'm gonna say, it expanded my career. Yeah. Because it wasn't until it wasn't until I hit when I hit his ribs, and the next day <laughs> I was sitting at breakfast, and Jameis Winston turns over and looks at me, 
And he said, oh, so you're going to just hit the um, NFL a baby like that? I said, what, what you talking about? And I look up, and all over the ESPN, breaking, loo- breaking news, Carson Wentz out with hairline fracture in the ribs. And he just kept on showing me, hit him in over and over and over and over. I was like, oh, man, that's me. <laughs> And they're like, but 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 Carson Wentz, he, I mean, uh, Jameis Winston, hear what he said. He said, you just going to hit the NFL's baby like that. Because they was hyping him up. He was going to be it. the savior. He was going to be the, the, I'm saying, he was the great white hope. The way they do Josh Allen now, where they keep waiting for him to take that next step, that's what they were doing with Carson. And that's why, you know what, they black, they, they black ball Joe black ass. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even gonna tell the story. That might be after after my career. Yeah, like, there was a particular story that happened to me. Um, but anyways, but that was the the next day that that same day, my agent texted me, "Hey, BC Lions and Saskatchewan are interested." I said, "BC who? <laughs> Saskatchewan who? The CFL? I'm like, what what does that stand for? Canadian Football League?" I was like, "Never heard it before." And I play football in Texas. Like we we know a lot of footballs. Never heard of CFL which I'm going to get on that later, but like never heard of CFL. And, but you know, long story short, a couple months later, that was my opportunity that got me on the map. Um, before that hit, no CFL team were hitting me up. I guess that hit put me on the map for the CFL and extended my career. So, um, I'm forever grateful for, for Carson Wentz. Um, I'm forever grateful for me not seeing that running back because, Oh, by the way, Remember I said he got the ball off? Yeah. Guess who got the ball off to? The running back. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when I think lightning, obviously, so you guys, from what I remember, you were at Tampa, 3-4, lightning, or we all 4-3? Oh, at that time we were 4-3 with Coach uh, uh, Coach Smith from Atlanta. He was the, the defense coordinator head coach for Atlanta, Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Okay, so yeah, yeah, four three. Yeah, four three. Okay, so you're thinking obviously lightning off the edge, yeah, all out blitz, all out cover zero. Just go get the motherfucker. But why the heck? What? So at no point you just thought, all right, I got a free shot. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. I, I don't even know if I had the pre pre thought play of I have the running back to be play, player. Yeah. All all I remember from that play, I'm not even kidding. It was say hit. Like the Red Sea open, and all I saw was Carson. I'm, I, I, I didn't see anything else. I, I'm not gonna say like, oh, I saw the running back leave, and I, I just let that go. No, 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 no. You'll see it on film. There was no hesitation. There was no, there was no thought process. It was just like kill. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I did. But, but luckily, my boy Tavares McFadden. I don't know why I remember his name because I haven't played with him in like a decade. But he said, <laughs> I talked to him after the play. He saw me go. <laughs> Because he was a free state. He saw me go. He said, you know what? <laughs> he ain't going to get the running back. <laughs> and he co- he came off his man. He came off his man and got the running back. And it was third and eight. He got him at like six yards. Fourth and two. But, yeah. I got it. Yeah. I got it. I got the clip. <laughs> You know you what? Oh, you got it up. No, I got. Let me make sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? We we go we go do something, y'all. Hold on. This this is see because we done we done talked about everything, and then we gonna get to the five <laughs> questions. I want to share this screen. Okay, hold on. Let me pull it up. Let me make sure. I... Yes, you. <laughs> hold on. Let me let me let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Okay. Hold on. Let me pull it up. Okay. Okay. Right here. This is you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, no, yeah, up, up top, up top. Up top, okay, okay. I'm going to slow it. I'm gonna slow, so wait, I'm going to leave the quality like that, and then we're going to slow it back just enough. And we're going to turn the mute, turn it off. All right, here we go. All right. Here we go. That motherfucker went right by you. I didn't see him. I didn't see him. <laughs> I didn't see him. I swear I didn't see him. I did not. So Look. wait, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Sorry. All right. Got slot right here. He covered right here. So at no point in this, you didn't feel a breeze. Okay. Oh, you te- Oh, you squared up on it. Damn. Another angle.
you know what? That's a picture. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> So, so, so moving forward, moving forward, we'll, we'll, we'll end this. We, we, we've got a long list of shit, but to get to jump all the way, we'll jump to Calgary. But actually, we didn't cover Calgary already. Shit. Let's go yeah. to five questions, Micah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to end it on a high note. So, all right. Oh, my God. That is funny. Oh, my God. So, five questions, rapid fire, man. You ready? All right. All right, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Are you a fan of jollof rice? I make jollof rice. What you talking about, man? <laughs> go, 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 go! Ask my teammates. Go, go, DM each and every one of them and ask them about about my jollof. Mine, but my mom will make it way better. My mom will make it way better, but I'm I'm her underling, so you know I gotta be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, right, what what? So, well, well, hold on, hold on. Now, what's the secret? What's the little secret? Because I've been, I'm, I've always wanted to make it, but that's oh, crazy. ain't no secret. We we don't we don't we don't do a secret recipes in Nigeria. We want everyone to eat. Yeah. So if you if you want a recipe, I can I can I can throw something together for you and send it to you. Throw it to me, but, man. Send it to but me. But it's the it's the trilogy. It's the trilogy: onion, mm -hmm. red bell pepper, and tomatoes. That's the trilogy. What the? That's heck? the trilogy. You no know? spices or nothing. Just no, no. They're spices. I'm just telling you. That's the that's the root. Trinity. That's the root. It's, okay. That's the holy trinity. The holy trinity right there. Kind of like gumbo. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Toughest game you've ever had in the CFL. Oh, in the CFL. Oh. Man, my first one ever. Preseason game. 20, 20, 2017. Uh coach coach. <laughs> Dang, this is supposed to be quick. Uh I didn't know I was starting. Um, because it was first preseason game until 15 minutes before the plane because or no no until the day before the game because Solly wasn't playing and coach coach Bond said hey Micah you're starting but the, the problem is you're like oh that's a good opportunity right you starting I was already starting on all four specials oh and by the way if you don't know preseason games don't have no commercial breaks so it was kickoff defense punt <laughs> offense is going to do a two and out <laughs> back on punt <laughs> all right my bad no, you're good. Nah, I'm loving that, this, that, man. That, that hurt. That That's hurt. Because the first special teams game, not special teams, but the first ever uh, preseason game I watched was a Toronto game. And I thought, they were playing at some random field, and I was like, what what, what, what the hell is going on? Like, this is different. There, there's not a lot of energy, even though it's preseason, but still like, man, this is and it's just like the NFL preseason. Don't want to give guys, a shit. Guys are dead. That's why. The guys are dead. And, and we were playing in Calgary. Which was way higher elevation than I've ever played, anyways. Yes, it's like playing in Denver, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's similar. <laughs> <laughs> what is the? I, I'm gonna ask for the third question. This is you. Know, you, <sighs> I'm gonna ask it. I wouldn't say the worst, but what was like the the dwelling the, the team that had the not the best amenities. Oh nah, I can't answer that one. They, they know who they are. <laughs> no, 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 I think I think if you ask, if, if you did a poll, an anonymous poll, like I would know too, because I've been in every every team except for two or three or something like that. Um, but but I'll be positive with the ones that didn't have like great amenities. There's always something that kind of like made it better. Like better than others, yeah. Like yeah. Just, that's being real ambiguous, but that that's that is the truth because you know you 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 start being like, man, this sucks. And you're like, but this this is different, and, and you you make yourself happy. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Auto curveballs, don't get it twisted. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Number four, what does Mike always like to do in his personal time, man? What, what's your uh, outside of football, man? What's your thing? Things, things oh. you like to do. That's that's easy right now. Uh, purple shift. <laughs> Go look it up. That's an easy uh, like easy plug. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate that plug, my boy. I thought, no. like, hey, I want, hey, eat. He got what everybody eat. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. No, that. No, I, I like. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Like that, that does get me going because um, I almost got missed. 
And I just want to make sure that next kid out there, the next Mike Alway out there doesn't get missed. So that really does get me going. Okay. Do you, uh, any other hobbies, video games, anything fun? Read? Oh, man, I, no, I don't read. I don't read. Actually, I got one for you. F1. Formula One. Oh, my gosh. If y'all have not watched that Netflix F1 formula, you, you got to get on it. I, I don't I don't really get that, that super passionate about a whole bunch of other sports, like except for football. I mean, like baseball. Who gets passionate about baseball? You know what I'm saying? But like F1. If you have not watched F1, go watch. Just start watching today. But that F1 formula, I like documentaries is what I'm getting Me at. Me too. Oh, you like, doc- but, yeah. I like documentaries? I, I love documentaries. I, I, I'll watch a two-hour, three-hour documentary and be, like, smiling. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm some, it's something yeah. about a documentary you just if you like le- I like history and all that but oh, learn, learn it. random shit just it, yes. it's fun to know that shit it is I, I'm gonna say what who's your <laughs> F, who's your who's your guys for F1 man my guys for F1 yeah oh I gotta go with Hamilton man I we haven't learned much about I'm still in season three but he, he just like I, I read about his story a little bit and man, and he said this one thing in this one of the interviews that from season two, he said, like, I go hard every day on the track because of what like my parents gave for me. Like they sacrificed so much for me to be here. So it'd be like it, it'd be almost like uh, like he didn't want to squander what they what they did for him. And I, when he said that. I'm like, oh, that's not for the cameras. That's not for anything. Like, that's why he, he's a dog. Like, yeah, he, he, that's why he is who he is because he he understands. Like, he, he he's not taking it for granted. So I appreciate that. I like that. I like that. And the yeah. final question, man. As far as it goes, as far as this upcoming season, man. What can we expect from Micah Alway and the Calgary Stampeders? Oh man, like for me personally, like. I'm not gonna cap. I'm not gonna sit here and give you political. political no, don't, no, 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 don't bullshit me. Get, we no, come I'm on, not, Coach Phil. Tell me the truth. Because, because, because most people probably would, but like, I'm gonna do it because I think it's that accountability. But I'm going for MOP. Like, I, it sounds crazy. A linebacker getting you know, MOP that doesn't return punts. The last time I did it was in high school. I mean, I was MOP of my district as a pair linebacker, mm-hmm. um, and it, it really was that because my coach. He asked me too the same question. What's your goal? I said, uh, mm, district MVP. He's like, no, no, no. Or he said, he said, all team. De- I said, all team, like first team defense. He's like, no, no, district MVP. And I looked at him kind of crazy, like, come on, coach, like, and shoot, he, I got it. And ever since that day, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna shoot there, and then if I don't get it, then hopefully I fall, you know, somewhere on the moon. And then for Calgary. You know, I'm not going to make no promises, but um, I got other people on my team that have the same exact mentality I just said, which is they're trying to get MOP. So if you got 12 guys on the field at the time, all trying to get MOP, then good things happen. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Ain't no promises, but like we got some dogs. <laughs> oh, y- y'all, y'all, oh, y'all picked the secondary just picked up, picking up Demario. So yeah. Y'all, yeah. ooh, the the West. Th- this might be the year where every the playing field is so leveled for everybody. But I will say for you, I've watched your film. I respect your game. Hell of a player. Now, can I give a coach? I've never really done this. Can I give a coach field evaluation? Of course, <laughs> of course. Okay. First things first. You do know who's the only defensive player to ever win an MOP, right? Solomon. Yes. Yeah, the standard is very, very high. You automatically think that maybe a defensive player, uh, like a defensive lineman, could do it, win defensive player of the year, and win MOP. But to be honest, with the numbers you put up this past season, you could build on it. Now, I will say there's some things as far as being in coverage a little more, being able to make mm-hmm. plays in the in in the p- pass defense. Man, that it's there. It's that's room for growth. If you want yeah. to win MOP, you can have 137 tackles or 140 tackles, but what are you doing to make up for as far as in the pass game? That's all I'm right. that's all I see as far as growth. I won't say like I won't say anybody like where to get better. Just yeah, coverage. Because Cam is getting picks. 
But I want right. to see you get picks. I want to see right. you b- get some pass breakups. I want to see you do more than just drop hook the curl. I want to see you get vertical. I want to see you do it. it the, the, the game in the CFL suits guys like you who are not these big 6'2", six, 6'3", six, linebackers. Right. If you want to do it, man, it's it's all you. Just, yes, get, just grow yes, on sir. that. Oh, and also, can you do me one favor? What's up? That breakdown. Y- y'all, y'all kill me sometimes. Y'all just be, and I love the aggressiveness of your defense, but just that breakdown, man. Some tackles, y'all, y'all get so excited in the pursuit. Uh-huh. It's kind of they kind of get away from y'all. I need y'all to kind of wrap up a little more, man. That's it. That's all. That's no, all no, I, I got you. No, that's fair. No, that's fair. And and like that's 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 the fine line between just like tackle. There's no there's no tackle I've ever made that's ever been the exact same as another tackle. No. That makes sense. So no, that that's fair, and that's 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 honestly what you just told me is the reason why I'm still playing because till this day I've never had a perfect play. Nobody does. I've never had a perfect play where like it might have been a TFL, a sack, a forced fumble, but there was something about that play that I could have got better at. And um, no, nah, trust me, man, I, everything you're saying evaluation wise, like. Again, I'll, I'll probably have <laughs> uh, some things to say, like after my career. But like, trust me, like I'm I, honestly, if I if I were to evaluate myself, I'm you know third all time with tackles, all that. But I feel like that could that was probably like a B minus, C C plus year. Yeah, there, there's some stuff that I haven't been able to do that I want to do. Put yeah. it that way. So. So I, I got I got a lot I got a lot that I want to show, like even more than that. Like last year was just kind of like just a taste, honestly. And especially with all the guy with the way the West is looking right now, where you got to face a Vernon, you got to face a Trey, a MBT. Oh yeah, you got to face Trev. It's it's a gunslinging uh, division, and you got yeah. Zach, you got Zach, you got guys where they're different quarterbacks as far as like you know Zach. He's gonna want to be moved, but he's also gonna want to get the play action going. He's gonna want to do the and you gotta you gotta be able to tackle Brady. You gotta tackle guy Kadeem's no longer there, but you know, you got Kevin Brown, you got Kev Glock, you got all uh smoke, and now William Stand back in the division. Your game, man, you're seeing everything, man. This is a this is gonna be a great season for you to take steps and grow as a player, man. I'm excited to see you, man. And this has been one of my this, all the episodes are great, but this is this, this this is just fun just because you're Nigerian number one. <laughs> <laughs> but also, man, talking the game with you, man. And uh thank you so much, brother, for hopping on, man. I really appreciate it. Blessings to you. And uh when I come to Calgary, I want to see you do some work, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this has been another episode of Deep in the Game. We might be deep in this game, but you got the rules missing. Everybody take care. <laughs>